comments? Well, first of all, thanks for having me back again, Keith. Um, always, always a pleasure to come here. Uh, and every time it's, it seemed, I don't know what, what the deal is, but every time they invite me to come and preach, these guys follow me. <laughs> I, you know, they found out I was preaching today, and here they are. But uh, thank you to the harmonizers, uh, Glenn Lovosky, John Cooper, Gil Long, Bill Niscoda, and Eric Hamilton. A bunch of guys that just like to sing, so uh, we're happy to have them with us. Excuse me, Brian. Yes, sir. We do have a request for prayers for Gloria Marinelli. Gloria yes. Marinelli. Yes. She has COVID. Okay. Um, just want to mention the last hymn again uh, that I had when I preached the last time is the anthem from the International Farm Youth Exchange, the IFYE or IFE, formerly the 4-H Club, was adopted in 1948 as their theme song. You probably know it as Finlandia. I know Sonny does. Uh, this song certainly has true meaning in today's world. That's why I'm doing it again today. And if there are any church family graduates, please let Cindy or Marley Barrett know by today. Uh, they will be recognized on June 12th in a special presentation. So are there any other announcements we need to bring to light? Okay. Ryan, yes? Right now? Um, no, we'll do that for joys and concerns. Okay, joys and concerns. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's uh, join me in the call to worship, please. Give the Lord glory and honor. Tell his glory among the nations. Give the Lord glory and honor. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Give glory to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in holy attire. The Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. Our first hymn is 227, Thine is the Glory.
Please join me in the prayer of confession found in the bulletin. O oh God, this morning we come to the stillness of your presence to begin this day with you, so that out of this moment we may take with us a quiet serenity and strength to last us all day long. We have come to find wisdom so we do not make foolish mistakes. We have come to find peace so that nothing would worry or upset us all through the day. We have come to find love so that nothing would make us bitter, unforgiving, or unkind. We have come to begin this day with you, continue it with you, and end it with you, so that we will have nothing at all to regret. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, God loves and forgives us. All we need to do is ask. His love is all-encompassing, all-feeling, all-knowing. Jesus came to give God's love. We just have to accept it. Amen. The first reading is 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 through 33. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and he is to be held in awe above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bringing an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before him, all the earth. Yea, the world stands firm, never to be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the wood sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Thank you, Dave. And for those of you that uh, are a little bit on the... Uh, good side of 40, let's say. You might remember somebody named Groucho Marx used to have a show, and they used to have a magic word. If a person said that magic word during the show, they would win some fabulous prize. Well, there's a word throughout the service today that hopefully you'll recognize what it is, and maybe after church you can win some marvelous prize. <laughs> Probably not, but uh, I'm going to try to read this next scripture out of the Bible. The print is so small, and I don't need glasses to read, so I might just turn around and read this up here. This is from, this is actually uh, from John, and it's Jesus preaching or asking God for prayers for his uh, apostles uh, that he has just uh, chosen. <clears throat> John 17, 6 through 11, 20 to 25. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong verses. Wrong one. It's 17, not 16. Okay, start again. I have manifested thy name to the men whom you gavest me out of the world. Thine they were and thou gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. Now they know that everything that thou hast given me is from thee, for I have given them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me, for they are my, thine. All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, 
but they are in the world, and I am coming to thee, Holy Father. Keep them in thy name, which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The glory which thou hast given me, I have given to them, that they may, may be one, even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them even as thou hast thou has loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom thou hast given me may be with me where I am to behold my glory, which thou hast given me in my love for thee, in thy love for me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these know that thou hast sent me. Some days things go smoothly and some not so smoothly. <clears throat> How many of you think you found the word? Oh, just one. Okay, good. Won't have to give out too many prizes. <laughs> okay, as always, it's good to be back with my friends at Emmanuel. And usually I start with a question and I'll ask for a show of hands when we get to the end of the story. So pay attention. How many of you can relate to this? As youngsters, we are so looking forward to the day that we can drive. 
I remember counting the days to my 16th birthday, practicing with a family car in our driveway, finally getting bold enough to actually pull it into the garage. Next came the goal of reaching the age of 21 so we can legally have an adult beverage. Well, now we're in our 20s and we probably get married, start a family, begin a career. We struggle to get ahead. We have to pay lots of bills and don't have a lot of luxuries. It seems like we're slowly pushing a big stone up, a big wheel, up a steep hill. We make some progress, but then maybe we lose a job or another child comes along and it feels like the wheel rolls back down the hill a little bit. Eventually, probably in our 40s or 50s, we get the wheel to the top of the hill, right to the very peak. Then what happens? The wheel starts to roll down the other side. And what does this wheel have? Brakes. You're right. Now, I have tried to pass on some wisdom to my children. One of the biggest things is that time will start speeding up and you cannot slow it down. Look at the little guy, he's four already. Going fast, isn't it? Life continues to go faster and faster until one day we wake up and think, wow, where did all the years go? How did I get here? Okay, show of hands, how many of you have said something similar to those exact words? Yeah, that's what I thought, okay, good. The point of this little rant came from my discovering that Easter was five weeks ago. Five weeks! Seems like it was last week. But even crazier, my son, my baby boy, turns 43 tomorrow. How is that possible? Time sure does fly. <clears throat> when I last spoke from a pulpit, I was discussing the last 12 days of the Lord, and the last 12 uh, days of his life. And I mentioned that many of the things he accomplished before he was put to death and how very scary that time must have been for him. And we as Christians are so fortunate to know how that story ended, which makes it possible for us to mostly fully celebrate those days leading up to Easter. And today, five weeks later, we're four days from another very important day in the life of the church. Any guesses? Oh, anyone? Bueller? No? Ah, the ascension of our Lord. And let me just pause here for a moment to reinforce the difference between ascension and Pentecost, as I think sometimes we get them confused. The ascension of Christ was 40 days after Easter, when he was taken up to heaven to be with God the Father. And we will revisit this number 40 later on in the sermon. Pentecost was 50 days after Easter. And on that day, the Holy Spirit was put upon the apostles and they were given the power to preach in Jesus' name. And this is considered the birthday of the church. But back to our story. <clears throat> Hopefully you noticed that the harmonizer's song and our scripture readings were all about a word that Barbara thinks she knows, <laughs> glory. Back on April 3rd, when I spoke to you about the Lord's last 12 days, I said that he was probably, with good reason, a bit scared and anxious, even though he knew how the story was going to end. But how about this week? How would he feel knowing that in four days he would be delivered up to spend eternity with his father? I would imagine the predominant thought would be, he feels glorious. So. This week we are celebrating the ascension of our Lord. It's not a phrase that's used very often in the Presbyterian church. Protestant churches may tend to shy away from the ascension. It's something our Catholic and Eastern Orthodox friends celebrate, but we Protestants, not so much. The ascension was important enough to the early church that they put it in the Nicene Creed, which we say almost every week as the Apostles' Creed. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The ascension is mentioned throughout the rest of the New Testament and in many of the catechisms in our book of confessions. 
So maybe we as Presbyterians should focus on it a little bit more. With Christmas and Easter, we make a very big deal of our Lord's birth and his death and his resurrection. But what about the ascension? And we might think the ascension is not all that important. Excuse me. But if we overlook this event, we're going to miss out on some very valuable lessons. Without the ascension, the work of Jesus would be incomplete. So, ascension is 40 days after Easter. I'm sure you would all pass the number 40 test if I gave it to you right now, but no more tests for the moment. How significant is the number 40 in the Bible? You're going to nod your head in knowledge when I say these. God made it rain for 40 nights and caused a great flood. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. When Moses went up to the mountain to bring down the commandments, he was there for 40 nights. Goliath taunted the Israelites for 40 days before David showed up with his slingshot. Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days. The Bible has 40 different writers. I didn't know that last one. The number 40 is one of the most significant in the Bible. In some of these examples, it represented a time of testing and judgment. Yet there was always, in the end, relief and blessings poured out. The floodwaters receded. The Israelites entered the promised land. David killed Goliath. Jesus had victory over Satan, etc., etc. In Acts 1, verse 2, Jesus spent much of his last earthly days giving instructions to his disciples or apostles. Quick note, we are all disciples of Jesus. The apostles were specifically chosen to teach the word of the Lord. These instructions were given to the, given to the apostles were for the purpose of providing convincing proof that he did indeed rise from the dead in bodily form. Jesus appeared to many people during the 40 days. Corinthians 15.6 states that he appeared to more than 500 people at one time. These 40 days links them together with another, the other 40 events in the Bible. In Acts 1.8, Jesus gave these instructions to the apostles. Go to Jerusalem and wait. They go and they wait for Jesus to send the Holy Spirit which he did 10 days later on, Pentecost. Jesus tried to encourage the apostles that his leaving them again was actually a good thing, that it would be advantageous for them. Can you picture the apostles' reaction? Seriously? We're going to be facing all this persecution and doing it without you here with us, but that somehow is to our advantage? How could it be better for us that you are leaving? The answer, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus would not just be with the apostles, he would be in the apostles. And this would prove to be a much better option. When we see the apostles' lives after the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, we see a dramatic change from how they were before. Peter had been thinking of saving himself and cutting off ears and denying Jesus. Now he turns into this bold preacher and powerful leader. Where once the apostles all scattered when Jesus was arrested, they are now full of boldness and dedication. So back to the ascension itself. I think one of the main reasons we, for our lack of focus on the ascension is it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us. We can get stuck asking, how did this happen? How did Jesus ascend? Did he float up into the sky on a cloud? Or was it more like being beamed up from an episode of Star Trek? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'll never know that answer. So let's repaint the picture. The disciples had just spent 40 days with the living, resurrected Lord. They walk up the mountain that day just knowing that something special was going to happen. If you note, special things always happen on top of the mountains in the Bible. They asked Jesus, is this the day you will restore the kingdom of Israel? 
or the day you will restore order to all of creation and release Israel from captivity? And Jesus says, no, but you will soon receive the special gift of the Holy Spirit that will enable you to spread my teachings throughout the whole world. Then the Lord was lifted up into the sky until he was out of sight. The disciples stood there, wondering what they had just seen, gazing up to the heavens, when two men appeared and asked him why they were staring into the sky. That's a great question. My guess is that they just didn't understand what had just happened. Excuse me. It's not often that you see someone lifted up into the sky. Also, they probably were hoping Jesus would come back right away, return to them. They had already lost Jesus once, and now he's gone again. The disciples had just entered a short period of transition, 10 days to be exact. And we will be right in this transition period as we wait to celebrate Pentecost. Now, we are people who go through many personal times of transition, maybe waiting for Pentecost to come, maybe finishing high school or college, waiting for graduation, moving from one house to another, or maybe changing jobs, lots of transitions in our lives. I think we are all experiencing the greatest transition time in the history of mankind, the time between the ascension of our Lord and the time when he will return to us once again. We don't really like this time of waiting until Jesus comes again and finally makes everything right. We look around at the world around us and we don't like what we see. But during this time of transition, this time of waiting, Jesus has asked us all, as his disciples, to live in this moment and to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to others. He doesn't want us to just stand there, staring up into the clouds. <clears throat> How do we do that? We can tell people about our Lord and Savior, but I know most of us are uncomfortable doing that. We can probably more effectively show others who Jesus is and what he has done for us by our actions. We can show others by loving others, by forgiving others, and treating everyone with respect. The ascension of our Lord is an unusual, maybe uncomfortable story. It's difficult to wrap our head around it and probably gives us more questions than it does answers. We need to remember and focus on what a glorious time this was for our Lord. And because of that, we are all promised the ultimate glory of spending an eternity with the Lord. In the meantime, show the love of Jesus and the value that God has for us to all you meet. Please take a moment in the next week, and particularly on Thursday, to gaze up into the heavens and thank God for all you have been given. Then, lower your eyes and see what God has in store for you that's right in front of you. Have a glorious week. Amen. Our next hymn is number 228, Rejoice the Lord is King.
And at this time, we will entertain any joys or concerns that we can offer up today. Do we have any joys or concerns? Here comes the microphone. Got one back there in the corner. I have my brother Kevin down in Virginia Beach. He's uh, my brother Kevin down in Virginia Beach. He just had a laryngectomy done, I think on Wednesday, and uh, he's recovering and he's in a quite a lengthy operation. I guess they started at five in the morning and it took almost until 9 p.m. to get completed. Uh. And my other brother, Ken in Michigan, he was just here yesterday and he looks pretty good. He's going through his treatment for cancer also. I would please ask your prayers for all of them. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Kevin Wells and Ken Wells, both battling cancer. We'll offer them up, Jeff, thank you. What else do we have today? David. Uh, yesterday in uh, oops, that's a little. Yesterday in AA, there was a visitor from Buffalo. She was from the Buffalo Group, and of course, she spent the whole week at that Tops in Buffalo last week. And she said it was it was just totally unbelievable what she described. And if you think last week was bad, she goes starting Monday are the funerals, and she's going to be up there all week with them. And uh, I just, you know, our prayers for the people of Buffalo, and it, it's just, uh, it's, when you look at something like that, you say, why? Just why? So, B Buffalo's going to need a lot of help this week coming up. Thank you, David. That was for the Buffalo tragedy victims and the whole town of Buffalo. Uh, prayer, the funerals will start this week, and it's going to be a tough time in Buffalo. Anyone else? Oh, down here. Down here, Keith's got one, I think. Do we have a joy? Our joy is that today is Arlo's fourth birthday. Happy birthday, Arlo. Seems like he was just last week. Okay, anything else? Anyone else? All right, let us, let us pray. Dear Lord, we bring to you today many of our joys and concerns. We ask that your healing touch be put out to Gloria Marinelli, to Kevin Wells and Ken Wells as they undergo treatment and battling cancer. We ask that you take the city of Buffalo in your hands be with the victims of the shooting last week, the tragedy. Be with the whole town this week as they begin the funeral for these people. And our joy, our glorious joy, is for our happy fourth birthday for little Arlo. We ask that your touch be placed upon those in need of your holy healing. Give them strength to deal with whatever burden they are facing. We thank you for this wonderful joy of Arlo. May we be worthy of the love you offer us. Amen. And please join me in the prayer given to us by our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Continuing with the new tradition, please place your offerings in the plate as you leave the sanctuary. We now have our offer for renewal. <laughs>
Lord, we offer these gifts to help with doing the work you charged us to do. Let our offerings be used as you would lead us to do the most good in our community and in the world. Amen. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.
some thought. Dude. Oh, I don't forget. <laughs> Be careful now. Yes. 